welcome to the Crazy Town Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Dynamite, the explosive one. Let's crack into another one. TNT. Yo. Um, how do you feel? How do you like freedom? Um, one of the most important things that we have as humans. Oh, yeah? Yeah. One of the, I would say the, there are very few things that are worth more than money. But I would say is that information is one of them and freedom is probably on the top of that list. Yeah, free speech is pretty far up there. I mean, that's freedom. That fits yeah. underneath that canopy. Yeah, freedom yeah. freedom of autonomy, freedom of speech, freedom to think. I think that those freedom all fit under the umbrella of freedom. And it's, Did it's, you hear about what one of our Supreme Court justices said? Most valuable thing we have. Well, um, what, what did they say, Jonas? I don't pay attention. There to was a uh, Supreme do, Court justice. Her name is Katanji Brown Jackson. Oh, you... yeah. Heard oh, about yeah, this, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I know she, the name. She well. was talking, and I don't know what she was doing. Where she was, what what the what the uh, frame of reference was, but she said something about how the free speech guarantee is an impediment to the government. It's ham it's hamstringing the government from doing things it needs to do. Yeah, and literally that is the entire purpose of the First Amendment. Yeah, she said the quiet part out loud. I get Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. So, so it's like, and, but here's this. I think the scariest part about that is she is one of the few justices on the literal highest court in the land. Yeah. And those words came out of her mouth. Yes. I think I was like, oh. Yes. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's interesting. You know, you know that whole thing about absolute power corrupts and or power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. You're you're seeing that firsthand. Um, and, and I totally understand it's like when you're doing a job, like I'm trying to see it from their perspective, when you're doing a job for as long as they are, it becomes just mundane. So that goes you, for any you lose, um, hmm? you, when you're in that, you lose the, you almost live in an alternate reality because like you do, like when you first get the job, you understand how important it is and you're making a difference. But when you've been doing the same job like that for 20 years, it's just a job to you. It becomes yeah, you become disassociated. Like yeah, that's, if you, yeah, that's, if you were a doctor and you're doing surgery, your 100th surgery is going to feel like, you know, nothing. It's going to feel like a Lego set. Right. Like, like you've seen it all by that point. So they, she's become a little disconnected. I feel like a lot of them become disconnected, and that's why there needs to be term uh, limits on the Supreme Court. Term limits, and uh, I mean, like same thing with senators and congressmen. Term limits. Yeah, like you can only be in there for so long, and then you got to like. Yeah, essentially their annuals are when they get voted in. So like, if if you don't if you don't feel like you're doing a good job, they get voted out. You know. Yeah, I mean, but, but the Supreme Court's for life. But yeah, it's foe. Life. It is, it is kind of sobering to see that a, that this seems to be a common sentiment in, in, in American government right now. Like, obviously, Donald Trump has said things where he's like, the Constitution should be suspended and certain things about, I'm going to be a dictator on day one. And now you have like, I've heard like similar uh, ideals from Marjorie Taylor Greene. Where it seems like they want to take the power out of the hands of the people. Of course. Because, you know, what that does, it makes them weak. But that's not in step with what democracy is. I agree. And it's... the thing that we hold so dear in this country is the fact that it is a democracy. We moved here, quote unquote. I didn't do it, obviously, or my ancestors. But our ancestors moved here to seek democracy. Yeah. I mean, it. It's a, uh, it, right? It's crazy. It's like <laughs> it's very crazy, like, Jonas. It's, it's Thank like, you. I have you ever you read 1984? Did I read a have book? You re have, well, no, I, <laughs> I ain't read no book. Not even high school. You didn't read that? No. So do you you know what 1984 is about? Uh, the year 19 okay. the Bee Gees. It, it is a it's a, it's the world at that point. The, the it's what's really kind of weird about this book is George Orwell wrote it in like 1945 or something okay. about what he thought the world was going to be like in 1984. Okay. And like, there's a lot of like in all these wars going on, but essentially it's like a totalitarian society. Okay. And like, they have like they, what they call like double think and like the government controls everything. And like, it's, what's really kind of weird about yeah, it is like, yeah, they have like flat screens on the wall that the president talks to you and stuff. Like it's kind of spooky, like kind of okay. the stuff. Right. But part of like the double speak thing was like, they start saying things that don't make sense. Like it's kind of like war is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. So it's like by 
so it's like you start using these things that confuse people like oh we have to be at war to bring peace we have you you know it's like uh, it's like you know your freedom is actually slavery like your ignorance is your strength uh, like and then the people start buying in you know buying into that and like whatever and then the government is completely in control by that yeah and yeah. like that is what that reminds me of there's there's a danger in in those mottos too and those models, those little colloquialisms, those little like those little spicy hit pieces that people say is like that whole like war is peace thing, because that is very true. It's like we have to do this to maintain peace. That's not we have to kill a bunch of people to, to show our strength so we can have peace yeah, later. Like yeah. it's weird, dude. You're not even wrong about that. And I even like I don't care how you feel about uh whether you're pro life or pro choice, the fact that our autonomy as Americans was was taken away and people actually champion that. I don't yeah. understand that. I never understood how you could look at having less choice as something that you can champion because it didn't stop. Abortions ain't stopping. Right, right. If they're, just less outlaw, they're just more dangerous now. Yeah, if you outlaw them, they're not going to stop. People they tried to outlaw alcohol. What they do? Speakeasies. People were still getting drunk. Exactly. So I, it's like you you have to give the American you have to give the American but let me, people but let choice. Me ask, but let me ask you this. But with with what's with, go ahead, Jonas. Ask your question. I, now I got because uh -huh. you're, you're you're big about laws are created for for not us. Yes, I do say that all the time. So what's the difference between that and them saying like? You can't drink or you can't have an abortion because they're they're not creating the law for us. In their mind, they're doing what's best for the people. I feel like and where I was going is like I feel like there's a difference between laws and parameters. Parameters are like uh, you can't drink until you're 18 or 21 or you shouldn't smoke and you can't smoke until you're 18 or 21. Whereas if you outlaw something, you create an ideal where people are like, I can monetize off of this by doing an, act, an illegal activity. So if they had like marijuana were illegal until you're 18 and in the states where it is legal, that is the case. There's not a drug ring because it's legal. Do kids still get a hold of it? Yes, but you're dealing with a much smaller community that you actually have to police for criminal activity versus the parameters of just like saying, kids, you can't have this. Yeah. That is my point. No, no, I get it. That makes sense. And it's like when you're like, when like, a, like their parents are like, you can't date that boy. Like then all they want, <laughs> then all they want, then all they want to do is date the boy or something. Now they're like, under the bleachers. Just take a number. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, that's right? not what it, it's like if if it. it is if it is outlawed, it's more appealing. Y you know what I mean? It's, I wouldn't say it's even more appealing, but it has like that whole FOMO, that whole like illusion of what is it? Uh, the illusion of scarcity. So people are going to want to indulge in it more. At least I feel. No, I mean. So I, I don't know. I feel like taking choice, taking away a certain just autonomy away from the people is going to make people wild out so i mean you're not wrong yeah and then people get all mad and people start revolting and then like and then it's a whole crazy thing yeah how, how do you feel about uh about the supreme court jonas in general yeah do you feel like they're getting too old i mean a lot of them are young and we're talking about the supreme court or are we talking yeah. about the congress supreme court okay yeah because uh Ruth Ginsburg passed away. That's true. So yeah. they replaced her. They've replaced like four of them in the last like 10 years. They were, uh, most of them were Trump So like Brett Trump Kavanaugh, who yeah. had sexual assault charges, is now one on them. Mm -hmm. And like <laughs> Clarence Thomas, who's taken, I mean, he had, he had sexual he's assault stuff. He, he's not Thomas young. He's not young. But he, when he got in, he was controversial. He had like, he had like assaulted somebody. Like it's, it, it's, it, it's supposed to not be politicized. The Supreme Court is not supposed to be. They're supposed yeah. to be impartial. And like, it's, it's, I don't know, man. It blows my mind. I wonder uh, to this point is where the, where the, where the allegiance really lies because government was supposed to work for the people, right? Uh -huh. A lot of them work for themselves. Yep. Or they work for somebody Corporations else. Corporations to give them money. Exactly. So it's it's hard to tell where the allegiance is. I feel like the majority, I truly in my heart want to believe that the majority's people get in because they want to make it better for the American and person. And then they get bought. 
But then they, money talks, and then they get bought. So then, are they working for themselves? Or are they working for somebody else? The banking industry, I think, is the real people who. Run. What's What's more dangerous if they work for a corporation or if they work for themselves? What's more dangerous? Uh, Critical thinking corp- activity. Corporation. You think the corp and why? Of course, you. Got, you know, I only ask because. <laughs> Why do you think it's more dangerous uh, they work for a corporation than th- themselves? They what happens is, he, I think a lot of people come in with the mindset of I'm gonna I'm gonna work for myself. I'm gonna try to like do what's good for me and like the people of my constituency. And then what happens is you get caught up in a thing of like, I took donations, and then they're like, well, we donated all this money to you, and you're not gonna help us like get this thing pat. And then like what happens? They lose you, their freedom if you don't. Exactly. If you don't then you know your time is numbered. If you do, you sell out. It's like, and money talks, man. People got lots of money. Like, to some people, a million dollars is nothing to give away to get what you want in the government. Mm. So they will, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, you know, Jonas. Look, you're speaking. You're speaking some real shit right there. I like that. I like that. You know. So, and, and if I had billions of dollars and I could give people a million dollars to get what I want, I'd probably do it. You make a valid point because I feel like people will work harder for the dollar than they will for their own self interest. Like I can't get my ass out out of bed to go to the gym, but if you offered me a million dollars. My ass would be at the gym right now, right? Like, I'd, I'd give up all my responsibilities and go to the gym yeah. for a million dollars. Honestly, you offered me $500. I'm probably up and at the gym right now. Yeah, if they're like, if you go every day so this crazy. week at 5 a.m., I'll give you 500 bucks. I'd probably be like, all right. So, yeah, you're right. It is more dangerous. Huh. Yeah. I mean, agree. I agree 100%. So, anyways, that's all the time we have for today's episode. Please make sure to like and subscribe for Jonas. TNT. Oh, yeah.